Welcome guys to course one. This is basically going to cover some of the fundamentals and basics to get you going in magic. Yeah, um, so really, man, I'm excited for this. This is going to be good. Yeah, it really is. But really what we're going to cover in this channel to focus on is cards and coins. Uh, I know there's so many different pathways that you guys can take out there and I encourage you to try them all but just the accessibility of cards and coins is just vast because you can go anywhere and you can grab your deck of cards right and get a coin basically anywhere. Um, these are bad examples because you can't get this coin or these cards anywhere but standard set of bicycles or bees or tally hoes or any coin really should do you and get you going but yeah let's 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 get to let's get some action going here and i don't want to leave you guys in a bit of a drag too i want to give you something right off the bat something to practice and have fun with so we're not just gonna go theory history all that jazz too we'll certainly dive in a little bit but uh I want you to leave even course one with something fun you can do um, and play around with and be excited for course two because uh, yeah that's already planned out good you guys are gonna enjoy that one um, but for now like I say I'm gonna go off the presumption that you've never picked up a deck of cards okay of course you picked up a coin but I mean cards it is possible um, especially getting these uh it's pretty rare that we we play cards anymore right so you got to get your hands used to cards there's nothing in our everyday lives that uh, are that's emulate cards really so our hands the muscles in them really have to develop for these tricks okay that's why the pros make these tricks look easy is just because they've practiced enough to get the muscle memory in their hands to do this right if you want to see a want to challenge a real pro tell them to do the same trick in the other hand right now of course there are some people um, and i do encourage you to practice in both hands or you might get stuck in that narrative right but back to getting started once again step one pick up your cards right and most likely you're going to put them in your hand just like that and magicians in the industry refer to this grip as mechanics grip or dealer's grip there's not much of a difference they're interchangeable okay your finger could be on the front or the side that could be situational or however you're comfortable okay but hold it in mechanics grip get used to this i hold them all the time just while i'm talking in mechanics grip okay so a little bit of lingo to start you off, okay? Um, now, like I say, you're not used to cards, right? So basically you're gonna wanna just get used to them. Even if that involves just a little bit of overhand shuffling, well, you got nothing to do, right? Even fans, try and just do some fans, right? You'll find the right rhythm for your fans, see? and you'll get solid fans after a while, okay? This is also a great way to break in that slide you get on brand new cards, doing fans, okay? But it gets your hands used to fans and used to just a lot of little things you're gonna end up doing. Holding a fan, just even like this. Once you get a fan, hold it for a little bit. See how long you can just talk with the fan. Not that you're gonna do that often, it's just the fact that it builds your grip right it builds the muscles in your hand that are new they're uh, they don't get used in this way often that's the whole point of this now like i say i want to teach you something a little bit fun and i think it's one of the best things for building hand movement and teaching your hands to handle packets and what i mean by a packet another little bit of lingo start taking notes okay a packet is individual chunks of cards. This is two packets, right? That's three packets, okay? Packets, packets, what a cool word. <laughs> um, 
you humans. But what is a great move to start and start rock and rolling with is a Charlier cut because not only is it cool, but it's also the base to a wonderful world of cardistry. It really is. So many cardistry moves are based off of or uh, start with the move of a Charlier cut. And on the magic end, it's a wonderful move to get some of your tendons and muscles used to moving cards and packets around at your will, okay? But basically a Charlier cut is just, I know that may look simple, but if you've never handled cards, it might take you a little bit of time just to get used to this, okay? Now, let me break it down slowly what we're doing there, okay? Because it could be a little daunting as well. So from step one, we're gonna start in that mechanics grip we just had, okay? Then we're gonna put the pinky finger. It's gonna brace this deck. So we gotta move it from the side to the back like that. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna break a packet, okay? Now you see this pinky's purpose. When you break that packet, see how it's supporting that top packet, okay? That bottom one's just falling now into the hand. Next, our ring finger is going to come underneath this bottom packet and it's going to slowly raise, well not slowly, but until the packet clears. Now our index finger is supporting this packet, right? We're just going to slowly lower it down until this other packet drops on top, just like that, and then pull our index back out, whatever way is comfortable and square up the deck. Ooh, there's our next lingo. When you hear square up the deck, all they mean is evening up the edges, okay? Whatever form, whether it be on a table or in your hand, you'll hear squaring up the deck all the time. All they mean is you're straightening out the edges, okay? But practice that Charlier and you'll get it nice and smooth. And you can do it all the time, just in one hand, while watching TV, talking on the phone, whatever you wanna do. While texting, right? One-handed, lots of one-handed activities. <laughs> but it's fun to do, and it gets all those muscles going in your hands. Great stretch routine. like uh, my face is absorbing this mask. <clears throat> now with coins, 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 shiny stuff, man. You shouldn't be using what I am. I've made a mistake. I just grabbed it. I wasn't thinking about it. It's a Morgan dollar, right? I, you'll see them all the time in magic, right? But nobody knows what a Morgan dollar is. So they may think it's magic coin. And the other thing too, is if you just pick up a Morgan dollar and never started any coin work before, you're gonna get used to this size. So when somebody says, here, take a silver dollar or take a loony if you're in the great white north like I, <laughs> um, you're, you're not gonna be used to it, right? So, Find a more typical currency um, and practice with that, really. Uh, Morgan Dollar is just nice because it has some weight behind it. And if you ever get into um, stage or parlor magic, it's very visible from a distance because it's size, right? And it's color, of course. Um, and they're always just fascinating. You can always build story and character behind a Morgan Dollar. For instance, this one is carved out right? Uh, they refer to it as hobo dollars. Uh, <clears throat> story for another time. But right away, I have a story to build upon. And that's some of the reasoning behind uh, using historical coins as well. But be sure to practice with just with typical currency. So you can borrow a coin off of somebody and uh, do anything you like with it, right? You can use your imagination and be very magical. But to get your hand used to coin work, um, 
I suggest just trying and practicing some light flourishes like a coin roll, right? Like that. Don't start fast. It is actually a hard move. People make this look very easy. It's not. Um, try different size coins right away because you'll find one or two sizes that really work with your fingers and make it uh, not, not easy, but at least give you a, a fighting chance in the start, right? Um, once you do get used to a coin roll, you can probably pick up almost any size coin and do it. Uh, but that, that's a good one just to learn in the beginning. Um, there's a million tutorials all over the YouTube, right, of coin rolls. So feel free to check those out uh, as well because, oh goody, I'm excited for next episode. I'm going to teach you some palm one coined routines right now this is a really magical lesson that's coming up because what i'm going to do is we're going to go through a routine that you can do much like practicing with that charlier but you're going to switch from run consecutively through a bunch of different palms that can really help you out and when you get used to doing this, the muscle memory also builds in your brain with this one. And it really turns you into a wizard. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Because you get so used to different palms that you also get used to the angles of perception that people have with them. So you'll be able to vanish um, or hide a coin very well. Um, and you'll get used to most palms for many different situations at, uh, at once. But because it is a more complicated routine, we're gonna dedicate all of course two to that routine with coins. Um, but for now, practice maybe a coin roll and also this is just a classic palm if you push it deep into that, right? Just like so. And do your daily stuff with uh, a coin palm. You'll get you'll build these muscles in here and your palm will look much more natural, okay? When you do that. It's a good way just to practice building some strength in your hand for coins. Okay? But like I say, come back for course two for some really exciting stuff with some coins. And definitely in the meantime, practice that Charlie A. And then we can build up from there. Um, get into maybe an actual trick or two um, after your hands get used to the Charlier. I feel confident that we could uh, move forth, maybe into a vanish or something, right? Oh, and back to these cards. I have some exciting news. I really do. So, like I said earlier, we've been using the Theory 11 Purple Monarchs here. Perps, right? Not our next coin episode, course two, but course three. Look what I got for you guys. A brand new deck of Purple Monarchs. And it's going to one lucky, like every YouTube channel, subscriber, and like this video below. And hey, shoot a comment because uh, I'd love to know what you uh, uh, think and what you're excited for in the world of magic. Yeah, because you should be, seriously. It's really, really uh, uh, an interesting, um, extremely fun hobby. Um, and boy, does it uh, leave some really, really lasting impressions on people. And uh, you'll... You, it really can change your life so i'm excited and i feel privileged that you guys are giving me the time of day to at least start at the basics and let's see how far we get from there right but uh come back for course two should be up in a couple days at least um and we'll go from there next time i get some good light in here you know <laughs> a little confined just saying help